Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will make this cork mushroom ornament for your Christmas tree. It's fun and easy and you can make this. So let's get started. To make the cork mushroom Christmas ornament, here's what you'll need. A cork. I like this one. It says, what's your story? I have purchased all of my corks at thrift stores and you can also buy them in bags at craft stores. This is a sweater, um, an off-white sweater. It's some kind of a wool blend. And I have cut a six inch by one and a quarter inch strip from the sweater. You can cut it from the ribbing or this one just had this design that I liked. You'll also need a three inch circle of felt or you can cut this from a sweater. I have a scalloped circle, a three inch scallop circle, but a regular circle works just fine. These are mother of pearl buttons. You'll need about 11 or 12, 10, 11, 12 of these. Smallish, small is better. Then we have baker's twine, off-white quilting thread, red quilting thread, a thimble, green embroidery floss, a little bit of stuffing, not too much, and we're ready to go. The first thing to do is to fold the strip right sides together and stitch up the short sides. That forms a ring like this. Of course, I also have my glue gun and my sewing machine. Now I will gather up one edge. I'm going to secure my thread in the seam allowance and gather up the edge, one long edge, like this. all the way around to where I began. Because the sweater is a little bit thick, it's not going to pull tightly, but that's okay because this is where the, the cork is going to go. This one, what's your story? This is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to place this little ring around the top edge of the cork. I'll distribute the fullness of the gathers. Then I'll kind of go around like this a couple of times. This is a doubled strand of quilting thread. I'll secure it, but I'm not done because I'm also going to glue it. So I'll pull it down a little bit and squeeze some hot glue around here and then I'm going to pull it back up into the glue. There's my hot glue, and so I just kind of pulled it back up into there. And then I will secure the thread. Next, I will gather the other long edge. So it's going to be like this. Again, I'm going to secure my thread in the seam allowance, and I'm going to sew maybe about an eighth of an inch from the edge. After I brought the sweater home from the thrift store, I washed it and dried it in the washing machine. So it felt it up a little bit so that the weave is nice and tight. There we go, I'm back to where I started. And before I pull it all the way and secure it, I'm going to add a little bit of fiber fill. It doesn't take much maybe the size of a cotton ball, about like that. I think this looks good. Now I'll just go around, since I still have some extra thread, I'll go through a couple more times, pull that together to make sure that's nice and tight. This doesn't have to be perfect. It will be covered by the red felt circle. Here's how I tie off my thread. I do a little French knot and pull it through and then I just pull until it pops through the fabric like that. 
There we go. Now I'll gather up the red. I've threaded my needle with a double strand of red quilting thread and tied a generous knot in the end. Now I will gather up the edge of the circle coming in about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm going to go all the way around. Just takes a second. These are fast. There we go. I'm back to where I began. I'm going to make sure that my the end goes on the top. So the knot is on the inside and then the end is on the top. It just makes it easier to manipulate. Place this over the mushroom, kind of make sure it's centered. Pull it up nice and tight, distribute the gathers, and then it's a little hard to explain, but I'm going to sort of backstitch so that I will catch these little um, these little gathers and secure them to the to the white part there. There we go. Now to secure my thread, I'll do that trick again. Where I make like a little French knot, wrapping twice, and then send the needle through, gently tug until I hear it pop through. There we go. Now with three strands of green embroidery floss, just a single length like this, also on the buttons. It usually takes 10 to 12 buttons. One thing to keep in mind is that there will be a hanging loop right in the center. It's okay to sew a button in the center, but um, just be sensitive and be aware of where that's going to go. I try to be very random as I sew these on and I sew each button on completely before I move on so that if um, this button has four holes, so I will go through all four holes before I move to the next button. I don't want to do part of the button and then go over here and then you know go back later. Just sew on each button independently. There's no uh, secret that I know of. They're just kind of random, different sizes. They're always a little bit different um, colors and sizes and styles. There's no real formula for this, just sew them on. I'm almost done with the buttons, but I want to go ahead and get my hanging loop on. About right here. If we're using felt, it's fine just to scoop through the felt of your hanging loop. But sometimes if you're using a sweater and the weave is a little bit more open, you might want to dip that needle way down to make sure you get it secured into that white section beneath the red. There we go. Let's see how many buttons I have. I have nine. I'm going to do two more. I like odd numbers and I feel like that's going to be just the right number. This is our last little button. So I'll send the needle out here underneath the little red edge there. And once again, do the little French knot and pull it through till I hear that pop. There we go. Every time I tell you it's a quick, easy, fun project, but this one is exceptionally quick and easy and it's fun to make. You can vary the color. You can make, I have some that are fuchsia, green, turquoise, and sometimes you get really fun corks. 
you can do different shades of embroidery floss and they can all be a little bit different. I'm kind of sad that I can't read that whole what's your story. Maybe I should have put it the other way, but besides that, it turned out great. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.